All right, everybody, welcome to Virtual Bourbon. My name is Steve Akeley, and we have a fun event tonight. This is the third uh, of the Booker series that we've done. So we started out with uh, last year's, then we did the year before, and now we are the year before that. So we're all the way back to 2018 here. This is the oldest set that I've got. So uh, I'll try to put together some different ones. Over time, I may be able to assemble those. But for right now, 2018 is as far back as I go. And I'm cer certainly currently collecting the new ones, one of which just came out this week I saw uh, starting to hit the shelves. So they've got uh, batch two for 2021, which should be good. But our goal tonight is going to be to rank these. So we're gonna taste through all four and we'll do it uh, twice like we always do. We'll taste one time, kind of go through and everyone will participate. We'll go through nosing notes and tasting notes and we'll do that with each of the four. And then we'll go through a second time, a little bit higher level that time, not necessarily calling on everyone. We will just go through and, uh, and talk about of the individual ones. So uh, should be should be a, a good event. And just as a reminder, this isn't the order that you're gonna be tasting them in folks. This is the order that they came out. So this is by batch number. I just wanna remind you of the names. I'm not gonna give you the proofs even. I don't wanna tip off anything uh, with this. So it's, it's gonna be blind, but I will give you the names because if you're on this event, you're probably a Booker's fan and you've probably tasted at least some, or if not all of these, but it might've been a while, you know, since it's, these are several years back that they've been out. So the first one, batch number one in 2018 was Kathleen's batch. So named after Kentucky bourbon hall of famer, Kathleen D. Benedetto. So, and we've had her on the bourbon show, great lady, and uh, has some great stories of working with Booker No. And she was honored by putting on that bottle. We brought her on shortly thereafter. That was the first time that I actually heard of her when she went on on the uh, the bottle, which was uh, very cool to get to know her a little bit back in 2018. And the second one that came out in 2018 was Backyard Barbecue. Next up was Kentucky Chew, and then finally Kitchen Table. So that's the four that we're going to be trying today. Again, that's not the order. The order is random. Now I could mix things up and have that as the order, possibly, uh, just to, to mess with you guys. Put them in the actual order that came out. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. So we'll, we'll see, and we'll do the big reveal at the end of tonight's session. For right now, we're ready to get started. Again, I just want you to keep thinking about that as we go through these, you're gonna be ranking them one through four, one being your favorite, four being your least favorite. And what we'll do that at the end after we go through them two times. And I'll give you a little bit of time on your own to kind of work on that by yourself. But let's start with A, the one that is marked sample A. Okay, starting out good, I'd say. This is a, a real good nose. What do you guys think on the nose here? Love it. Love it, I know, it's really, <laughs> really good. Caramel popcorn. Yeah, burnt, burnt caramel popcorn. Yeah, 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 yeah. kind of the darker Cracker Jack-ish, you know, which yeah, is yeah, yeah. darker than, than some of the poppycocks or the other ones, Fiddle Faddle, I don't know. Yep. All those crazy names of the, the lighter ones, Crunch and Munch. I need to start keeping a list of those and then a list of chewing gums since we do a lot of chewing gum notes in these. Uh, what else are you guys getting on the nose? Hey, Leah, how you doing? We're just starting on our first sample here. So that is A that we're nosing right now. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Leah? Leah, can you hear me? Doesn't look like it. Let her get caught up. <laughs> Steve, yes. Do you remember the bazooka gum? Yeah, I'm, sure. Uh, I'm getting kind of a hint. Hint to the bazooka. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that, yeah. The dust that come up that came off of it. The, yeah, the bazooka yeah, yeah. definitely had the had the dust yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But that's that's a good sweet gum. I, I enjoy it. But bazooka, the problem, only problem with bazooka is it only lasted like you know twenty seconds. It seems you know you put it in, and it's just so good, so sweet. And then like you know you're chewing it, and it's like not that long later, it's like oh, it's like chewing a piece of rubber. There's nothing to it. Yeah. So that's what we got. All right, let's give this thing a taste. Cheers, gang. First one up. Here we go. All right. Mm. Mm. that is good very, very good. hot very hot it is hot it is, it is definitely hot mm -hmm. that gets you all the way down too mm -hmm. that one that one follows you 
you can you can trace exactly where that's at in the process. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. What, what, I want to talk to everyone, and uh, because we have a group that's relatively manageable here, sometimes we split a, a, it up in two. This time, I think we're, we're of the size where we can ask everyone. So I'm going to go in the order you guys are on my screen for this first time we go through. So that means Carrie is the very per first person on my screen. Carrie, what do you taste in there? Um, I don't know. To me, I get kind of like the, the, the bubble gummy sweet flavor okay and the heat is definitely definitely there with this one but it's got it to me it tastes a lot different than it smells mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's definitely definitely a warmer one uh justine what are you thinking on the taste burnt brown sugar burnt brown sugar okay yeah yeah, I get, I definitely get that too. I also get, uh, I don't know, like some sort of cake from the bakery, some sort of, not like a birthday cake, more like a bundt cake type of thing. So I get some of that in there. Like a pound uh, cake. Pound cake, maybe, yeah. Back to the sweet thing you were talking about, Carrie. Uh, the legend, Rick Renner himself. What are you getting taste-wise here? I would say some really dark caramel. Okay. Our caramel. All right. Mr. Bill. Always like hearing from Mr. Bill. Sometimes he's just a uh, thumbs up, thumbs down guy. I really like it. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> That's a great tasting note. That's always my favorite. I, I, I can't describe anything. I just think that it smells great and it tastes even better. Okay. Okay. Hey, that's high praise from Bill, folks. So, no. <laughs> no. He can be tough on these things, so that's good. All right, Mike, you're the next one on my screen. Again, your guys, your screen may be different than mine, but uh, the next one up is, is Mike on mine. Mike, what do you what do you taste in there, man? I'm getting uh, on the nose. I get some. I get a little bit of mint in there. Okay, that surprised me. And then um, on the, the taste, it's a it's very rich. Um, you know, kind of sticks around and, and coats my tongue with it. But um, you get a lot of caramel, a lot of vanilla. Uh, really, really good. Very rich. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely uh, coats the mouth too. So it's got a good mouth feel and uh, it keeps, keeps some of that spice in your, on your palate as, as you're going through. And like I said, talked about with Fred about, you know, tasting it all the way down. You could feel that heat, but it keeps it in your mouth too, uh, based on the, the viscous uh, viscosity of this one. Fred, how about you, man? What are you thinking as you, as you taste? I kind of get, get that burnt caramel bubble gummy uh, taste. It's not, it does stick around. It hangs it kind of sticks to your mouth but it's not a long it's not a long it's not a strong finish mm -hmm. it, a good taste to it though yeah yeah you know, that second sip it didn't burn as bad right uh, i agree i yeah. agree this is a good one i don't know that's the greatest summertime one we've ever had but <laughs> it, is, it is good I, I this isn't one i'm gonna have out there when i'm cutting the grass that that much i do know <laughs> yeah all right next up is melanie on my screen melanie what do you got um, I don't have anything different than everybody else. I agree with uh, burnt caramel or brown sugar. Uh, definitely spicy all through the mouth and into the throat. Okay. All right. It's good, Neil. though. Neil, how about you, man? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I get like baking spices, but it's, but it's a sweet heat. I mean, it's a definitely, uh, definitely got some spice to it. Yeah, I agree. It's really good. It's one of those, it's so good and so hits the Booker's profile. I feel like in a blind test, we would be able to pick this one out and be like, yeah, that's Booker's. So it, it has, you know, great taste and high proof. It's everything we love about, about yeah. Booker's for sure. All right, Rob, how about you, man? I agree with everybody else. It's that just burnt sugar, caramel flavor. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Eric Johnson. The Iowa Eric Johnson, <laughs> not the Kentucky Eric Johnson. Yeah, who I still haven't seen, by the way. He's I know we can't get you guys on the same event. He comes on <laughs> events still too, but uh, not, we never had you both on the same event. Well, Steve, I don't think I have anything valuable to add to what people said. I think I'm still uh, the heat is significant enough that I'm looking forward to the second pass, and maybe I'll have something new okay. to add. But right now, um, I'm enjoying it, but uh, it is hot. Yeah, and that's why we do go through them a second time. This one does have 
you know, the uh, perhaps capability to evolve a bit. Paul, you're usually good at coming up with something unique that gives us that aha moment. What do you got here on this one? Well, I mean, I get what everybody else is saying, but to me, on the nose and the taste, the first thing I pick up is cinnamon, just overwhelming cinnamon. Um, but then you get that caramel, that vanilla that comes in, traditional, you know, bourbon. But I get a lot of oak, like almost like a tannic oak or a leather on the finish. Okay. It's really, really good, though. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. All right. Leah. Leah, how you doing? Leah is new to the ABV Network. She's going to be working with us on some upcoming events. So she's got a couple of cool ones in the works. She's got one on uh, pot still versus column still, talking, talking about the differences between the two, the difference the impact will have on taste. And then she has you do a, uh, four different bourbons, two of each, two column still, two pot still, and you try to pick it out. I think that's a cool event. And then she's got one on sensory. So the power of scent in whiskey, it's called. And uh, talk a little bit about nosing and all those things and kind of run you through some different types of whiskeys on that. So it should be good, right, Leah? Oh, you're, you're on mute. mute. You're mute. Got to Got to unmute there. There you go. Good. Uh, hi. Uh, I'm, I'm in Brooklyn. Hi, everybody. Um, I got on the nose, I, I honestly got some kind of green, like young green apple skin and dark pear on the nose. And then mm -hmm. um, for the palate, I got baking spices and kind of a burnt creme brulee and i and i thought about brown butter okay and when i had when i was on my palate it was brown butter um the finish was hot, really hot um mm -hmm. for me but um it, it, you know it was also short the finish was kind of short so it was hot and short hot and short yeah. <laughs> for me um, that's kind of what I got from, I mean, I, it was totally delicious. Don't get me wrong, but that's, those are my, um, kind of takes on that. Okay. Yeah. What we're going to do next, we're going to move to B, but again, we're going to pour one ahead. As you saw with that first one, it's probably good to let them sit for a little bit. So let's go ahead and pour C, but we'll be going back to B. So, but get C in the glass, leave D still in. Cause we want to get some of the early notes on there too. That's why we go through twice. So, but Sitting out for a little bit as we talk about B, I think is a good idea. So let's pour C and then let's grab B. B is the one we're going to be talking about here, folks. All right. What are we thinking on the nose on this one? Definitely lighter on the nose than the other one. But once again, kind of sweet. More subtle, some yeah. spices, baking spices. There. Subtle and baking spices, I think mm -hmm. is good. Yeah. Um, we talked a lot about burnt caramel and, and those type of things in the last one. I'd say the lighter stuff, almost like a Werther's candy uh, is uh, kind of the caramely taste here or, or, or caramely nosing I'm getting. We well, get kind of either bread or stale bread. Stale bread, okay. Well, I'm you know, not not terribly bad, but just like when you open it's like day old bread. Yeah, it's like when you yeah, when you open a bag after you know when yeah. it's not really fresh. You know, yeah, there's a difference. Like, I agree. I, I agree. It's just we hadn't talked about that before. Uh, Steve, just to be clear, we're jumping head to C now. No, we're on B. We're on B. Okay, so we're we're doing. We B poured C, but we're drinking B. Got it. Mm -hmm. Or at this point, nosing. All right, let's give it a taste. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> okay. I think this is more cinnamony to me uh, than the previous one. I, th I think I'm getting a lot of that on this one. Also, warm finish, but Again, kind of, kind of short to kind of hit you, and then kind of goes away pretty quick. <clears throat> Let's talk about what you guys are thinking about this. All right, this time I'm going to start on my screen. I'll start with Rob. Rob, what are your thoughts on on the taste on this one? 
Well, I kind of agree with you that it's it's a short finish, but it really just lingers in the front of my palate as well. So it doesn't, there's no real viscosity to it, but mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't have quite the heat of the first one. No, I agree. Yeah, but I'm not really picking out any notes outside of general bourbon notes, like caramel and brown sugar. Brown sugar. Spice. Okay. Kind of the normal ones. Okay. All right. Well, let's start with the Robinsons. We'll start with Neil first this time. Neil, what are your thoughts on taste on, on the bee? Offering? Yeah, this, to me, I think it's a little little buttery. It's got a, mm -hmm. you know, like a sweet buttery taste to it. Okay. And this was more peppery for me than the first one. They're both delicious, very different though. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm getting a lot of too, the peppery. And it's almost like the heat of it, again, is it comes on and goes away. But then it does, your mouth almost kind of, inside your mouth, your palate, it stays a little bit numb. There's a little bit, I mean, it yeah. just kind of just stays there. And it's the, like, oh, the, heat, yeah. the, the heat hits you in the back and then lingers in the front. Yeah, that's what's happening with me too, so. Yeah. All right, Eric. How about you, man? I'm still getting uh, baked goods. Uh, okay. Maybe the the butter that Neil mentioned, maybe even a buttered piece of bread or something, is what I get. Okay. All right. Sounds good. It's not bad. Leah, how about you? What are you getting as you taste this one? I love this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, I love this one. Um, the nose I thought was really interesting. I got a lot of dark, dark cherries and uh, piney notes, you know, some sort of almost evergreeny notes on the nose. Okay. Um, and, you know, uh, to sort of ditto everybody else, dark caramel and cinnamon and biscuity kind of notes on the, on the palate. I, I really, I really enjoyed this one. Excellent. It's very yeah. good. <laughs> All right, Mr. Paul, how about you, man? Yeah, I got a berry note on the nose too, I think. Um, okay. But this one for me was like right off. I mean, you could have put this in a hundred different bourbons and I would have known it was Jim Beam. I got that roasted peanut just mm -hmm. punching through on the palate for me. That's like mm -hmm. unmistakable Jim Beam. Right, right. Interesting. All right, Fred. Fred I get of course, that. Fred just, I, I do want to share. Fred told me that, uh, I don't know if you've been on some of our other events. He works for Buffalo Trace. He's a tour guide and he is on their tasting crew. And uh, he got the honor of getting to pick a barrel by himself, a Buffalo Trace barrel. And it's going to be coming out pretty soon, right, Fred? Hey. Yeah, beginning first, second week of July. Okay, yeah. first or second Very week of cool. July. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty that's cool. Great. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, awesome. and uh, a lot of us will be in town because we've got some events in uh, in July. So uh, yeah, maybe several of us can get by and pick us up a bottle of that, Fred. That'd be that'd be great. Support Very nice. Sure. Yeah. So on, on the on the taste on this one, Fred, or anything you want to share about the nose too, whatever you like, uh, tell us about your thoughts on B. Yeah, I get that buttery and, and the cinnamon like you were mentioning. And mm -hmm. the, the, it's not hot, but the spice, oh, I, lo I love it when it's spicy like this. And, and it just yeah. surrounded the tongue and stayed there for a long time. It, it's like the spices finish. stick with you. Yeah, it's like yeah. the tingling. It's like, cool. yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. And yeah. that's what I got. Yeah, and the, me taste, too, me the taste is great, too. Taste is great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is going to be a tough one, folks. That, that ranking these is so far two for two. They're, they're both pretty darn good. So it's going to be easy. <laughs> All right, Mike, you're up next, man. What do you got? trouble getting off mute um <laughs> i get the the buttery notes as well and in that that pine and i think that was that minty uh hint that i got on the other one and this one mm -hmm. um, and yeah it, it, but yeah a lot of butter very very creamy i think even more uh viscous feeling than, than the first one yeah. um and then, then those spices that hit you right in the back of the throat that was this is really a good overall uh, good overall with bourbon. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Mr. Bill, how about you, man? Again, I like it. 
so far <laughs> bill's having a happy event which is good for all of us when he's not <laughs> liking them it's, it's just we're all just miserable then but uh right now he's happy we're, we're all we're all good so uh and then later on he'll be demanding you vote for whatever one he likes best but don't you don't have to listen to him folks you vote for whatever you like best. <laughs> <laughs> all right the legend himself mr rick brenner what are your thoughts as you taste this one me um i was thinking more like a, a toffee okay yeah and of course some toffees have peanuts or pecans in them sure the best ones do so mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely all right we'll go to justine next uh so when i was at my brother's house over the weekend there was this little seasoning jar sitting on the counter by the toaster and i picked it up and looked at it and it was a vanilla cinnamon sugar concoction apparently my nephews put it on their toast okay uh, so i kind of got that same smell it reminded me of that over the weekend um but i definitely get like the roasted peanut that paul said um on the taste and the heat just basically stays up front in, in my mouth like i mean yeah. there's definitely heat there but it just kind of yeah. same there. thing like you're talking about what fred and i experienced too so yeah Oh, same type of thing. All right. Last up is Carrie for this one. Carrie, what are your thoughts as you taste this one? On um, this one, I get it's it's almost like a chocolate covered cherry. Mm -hmm. With but again, I I agree. It's it's definitely you can tell it's a bean product. Yeah. It's just got that that flavor, that heat. That, but I really like this one. It's got a great mouthfeel. Cool. All right, let's put that one aside. Let's put B back wherever you're holding these. We've hey, got Steve, Steve, can I interrupt just for a, a sure. short, hot, quick second? And sure. um, I, you know, I love bookers. Uh, so that's why I joined this uh, meeting. I, maybe you could just tell me a little bit about the bookers special project series. Um, you know, where the barrels come from, how that works. Oh, uh, yes. So, yeah. So, I mean, Booker's, I mean, the, the history of it uh, literally started uh, with Booker himself. And, uh, you know, it was something that he made and gave his gifts to friends and family, literally, uh, you know, a barrel strength offering from his favorite spots in the warehouse. And how it came about to be a product was uh, Booker was notoriously hard to deal with. So Booker, Booker did not work in Claremont. Uh, he worked in Boston. Um, the Boston, Kentucky facility because he liked being away. So oh. when the executives would come down from Chicago, they would go to Claremont and they would deal with his cousin, Baker Beam. He would, he would uh, deal with those guys and get them back on their way. And Booker didn't want to be messed with. He just wanted to do his own thing. And, right. uh, and, uh, but so they had a hard time dealing with him until they brought a guy on board named Mike Donahoe. And Mike was a former uh, tight end in the NFL. And Mike <laughs> came down and talked to Booker who uh, was a, a football player himself. He actually, uh, uh, was going to play at the University of Kentucky for Bear Bryant, who was uh, a coach on the Kentucky staff before he went to Alabama. And uh, but Booker got hurt and did not play. But uh, he was a football lifelong football fan, so he got along with Mike Donahoe. And he's the one uh, who who talked to Booker and said, "Hey, we want to do some expansion of things. Do you have anything?" And Booker presented him with uh, this product, which is Booker's, and said, Very "You know, cool. this is something I've been been dealing with." And he literally just had it in like wine bottles, the same bottle we got today, and it had handwritten yeah. labels on there. And yeah, they yeah. just they just mirrored that and they sent it out to distributors. And uh, as a Christmas gift, and, and, and everyone liked it, and they ended up putting it in production after that. It came, became the first item, which then became the small batch. It, it was a big success, and uh, the distributors liked it so much, they came back to Booker and said, you got anything else? And of course, he had some other things, and uh, ended up having the three other items that made the small batch, and it went so well that uh, they ended up sending Booker out. Uh, and to do a tour around the country talking about these new products, the, the four right. products that make up the small batch. So and it really, uh, it's one of those things that changed bourbon. I, I mean, from that point forward, the master distiller wasn't necessarily just a person who worked at the distillery and, uh, and ran the machines at the, at the distillery. He was right. also a person who went out and was, became the face of the brand. And Booker was of course. Really the first one to embrace that. So of course, that's, that's how they do Booker's today. Uh, of course, yeah. when Booker was on his deathbed, uh, and Fred Noe himself says this, so I'm going to take it for what it is. Sometimes there's could be stories of bourbons, but, uh, but Booker told Fred, you know, 
make sure the one thing you do is don't mess up my bookers. And I think Fred has done a, a good job of maintaining bookers and even yeah. kind of taking it to the next level because Fred's contribution to this brand is the naming of the batches. So as I talked about, sure. you know, we've got Kathleen's batch, the backyard barbecue. Uh -huh. So before it was just coded by numbers. And uh -huh. if I said right now, you know, uh, that th remember that batch from 19, uh, yeah. you know, 99, and it was uh, 032 162. You guys wouldn't remember what that is. But when I say, uh -huh. do you remember Kathleen's batch or do you remember backyard barbecue? You kind of can, can keep those things straight in your mind. So Fred's done a great service to this brand. And right. they pick them out in different ways. Sometimes it's done by the family. Sometimes uh, they do yeah. a round table where they get other people involved. So, yeah, that's about what. Yeah. Well, I mean, just, you know, not to derail the whole concept of the tasting, but, but one of the major aspects of how bourbon tastes is people, mm -hmm. uh, the people that made it. And Absolutely. I think we're all kind of leaving that quotient out. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? Because people go out there and they buy their liquor and they don't, they don't think about the, the human effort and creativity and legacy that went into that bourbon necessarily. But I would say that, you know, the, the human effort is one of the major tasting components of any whiskey you drink. So I agree. that's kind of what I'm trying to pr promote. Yeah. Um, anyway, the artistry. That's yeah. why that's why you got to have a good distiller to make good whiskey. Well, you can't, it's not. You can't, it's not going to be done by robots. <laughs> one distillery told me one time, and I'm not going to say who it is because it's offensive to me. One distillery told me we don't have a master distiller. We don't even need one because it's they're just a baker. A baker, you know, they set the the oven on whatever the temperature is. They look at a list of ingredients. They mix them all up. They put that in the oven, and uh, and that comes out as a cake. And in the example here, we mix up a mash that uh, that is a recipe, and we run it through the still, which would be the equivalent of the oven, and it comes out whiskey. And that's how we don't need it. Nice. We, we can have anybody do it. We can we can drop anybody and. That yeah. distillery is still around. It's not doing too good these days. Run so, far yeah. away from that yeah, person. Yeah. <laughs> not known for the good stuff. So, all yeah. right. Let's pour D. We're going to go back to C, though. C's been poured for us. Let's pour D. Okay. Because just give it a little bit of time just to sit around before we go to it. So, we'll pour D out. We're going to grab C. Let's grab C. Oh, I like that. That is like, um, you know, when you get, when you do uh, like the wintertime baking, there's like the dark brown sugar and the light brown sugar. This tastes like, our taste, it nose is like the light brown sugar to me. So I'm getting brown sugar, but definitely on the lighter side. So not, not the, the deeper, richer, darker brown sugar, but the lighter one. How about you guys? Anything on the nose of note? I was smelling red grapes. Red grapes. All right. Red, red grape wine. Yeah. Red wine. Mm -hmm. But Steve, to, to further yours, what do you think about chocolate? Like the cocoa, like Hershey's cocoa chocolate. <clears throat> yeah. Like bitter chocolate. Not, yeah. Not the sweet chocolate. Yeah. This is like being, uh, reminded me of being with mom at uh, cooking the Christmas cookies, you know, <laughs> all, all that stuff out there. Say nutmeg. Uh, nutmeg. There you go. Steve, you had mentioned butterscotch in the last one. I'm getting pretty good butterscotch here. Personally. Yeah. Yeah, butterscotch that. toffee a little bit of that this yeah. one's this one's explosive on the nose there's a lot there. oh yeah this kind is of waffles, definitely the most interesting waffles i mean yeah all right let's let's taste this one and see what we think here cheers gang all right This one's got the longer finish. It just keeps no. keeps staying and staying and staying. I'm getting those chocolate notes you talked about on the taste. It's got a real dry finish. Dry finish, yeah. yeah. But it lingers. It, mm -hmm. it stays yeah. there. Yeah, that, it's that real finish. balanced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. What else are you guys thinking? Let's start. Let's start with Fred this time. Fred, what are you thinking on the taste on this one? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting that kind of uh, that burnt, burnt sugar, um, uh, toffee, those kind of flavors, and 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 the the it's it 
the nose hit me similar to the first one, but it was more subtle. But um, and the, the the that spice is still surrounding my uh, the tingling is still surrounding my tongue. Also, the upper palate. Yeah, I feel the upper palate. Yeah, and one, and it was a nice finish too, gone down. This one sticks with you for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great flavor. Oh, not good. But then again, good. they've all been great flavors. <laughs> yeah, all three so far. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, how about you, man? What are your thoughts on this one? Um, not really anything different than, than what, it, what has already been said. I mean, it's all the those classic, uh, the caramel, the toffee, the, mm -hmm. that burnt sugar. This one hit me as a, it, which is strange being the third one that we've tasted, plus my warm up bourbon, that this one tastes a lot stronger proof okay. to me. Um, Usually, as you go further in, they taste lower on the proof. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> this one, this one hit me pretty hard. So, okay, this is probably the highest we've had so far. Mike falls off his chair. We'll know what happened. <laughs> well, you know, it's all good. Right? <laughs> You're home. That's why we do these events. Yeah, we can all be at home. There's no worries. We can we can drink as much as this is. That's what, and I poured my full samples. I, I some a lot of people do half pours. That I got all. I'm going to finish all these. I'm yeah. finishing them all. I'm committed. <laughs> All right, Mr. Bill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mr. Bill, how about you, man? I really enjoy it. Um, it's uh, vastly different than the first two. Um, I don't know. I like it. I like it. Okay. The thumbs up from Bill's a good thing. <laughs> send that to beam they give, they'll give it a thumbs up all right uh rick how about you man <laughs> uh, those thumbs up batch um <laughs> uh, i don't know if i can add to anything else except for the fact that this you get a good hug out of it yeah oh yeah mm. yeah this one this one is the the definitely the longest finish out of the yeah. ones we've had so far uh, there's there's no doubt about that uh, carrie how about you what, what are your thoughts let you taste this one it's like a coffee cake like the Coffee. <clears throat> you get a little bit of the allspice, a little bit of chocolate, mm. a little bit of it's just really good. <laughs> okay. All right, it's Justine. I don't have anything different to add than what Okay. All right, the defense rests. Okay. All right. <laughs> Paul, how about you, man? Other than other than what's been said, yeah, I, I get a lot of like cracked pepper, like cracked pepper salad. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Other than that, it's like everything. Everybody. That's a good said. one. That's a good one. Paul, you should be outside, man. It's yeah. humid. <laughs> it is humid. It is humid. All right, Leah, how about you? What are your thoughts as you taste this one? Uh, similar nose and palate, but felt that it was on the palate much more mellow. Mm -hmm. um, super mellow you know i'm i'm a i'm kind of a weird person because i love the really low shelf jim beam stuff um on occasion um and, i think we all do too i think we're yeah and, and it's beam just, fans. this this one this one just seemed like mother's milk to me i mean <laughs> and the palette the palette was so luscious and right. just kind of smooth and lovely and so i that was very that stood out to me okay yeah all right eric anything to add um love in the mouthfeel on this it is uh yeah. smooth luscious excellent ways to describe it so the yeah. mouth is excellent um i'm just going to for my tasting notes going to borrow something that uh, esteemed whiskey taster mike once taught me which is it doesn't suck <laughs> yeah yeah there you go all right rob how about you man yeah, more than the other two this one i got that roasted peanuts mm -hmm. and yeah, that's the first note that i tasted on this one gotcha all right let's shoot over to the robinsons it's a wild card now you guys get to choose who goes first <laughs> yeah this is definitely the most complex of the three so far Mm -hmm. And I just have to ask Michael, are you on Tatooine? <laughs> uh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> it's like sundown on well, Tatooine. All that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And it does seem to be older. The, the color seemed to be darker than the others. Okay. 
All right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I get a little bit. I haven't heard anybody else say it, but a little bit of oakiness to it. Okay. Uh, it's got a like I said before. It's got a real dry finish. Boy, it coats your tongue and just doesn't let go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's put this one aside for now. Again, we'll come back to them. We'll go through all of these. For the moment, we're going to move on to D. Our last one. Let's grab D. Should already be poured. Uh, while we're while you're pouring, Steve, can you can you talk a little bit about um, where all these different project series were in the warehouses? I think that's I know instructional probably to think about hmm. while we're tasting. So when stuff is high in the warehouse, mid level in the warehouse, and lower in the warehouse. Yeah, these are all bookers. All comes from you know. Uh, yeah, they, they like to use an X, right? So right. to tell you where it's at in the warehouse and they like to go center upper uh, with, with this particular product. So these, these are typically coming from there uh, cool. in, in your warehouse. So that's, that's where they, they grab the bookers from. So again, uh, per bookers specifications, and I don't think they're changing anything. Um, uh, I think they still utilize basically that system. So, all right. Anything on the nose here? This one again, to, to me, is is one that's lighter on the nose. Hmm. It's lighter on the nose, but when you stick your nose in the glass, there's a lot there. <laughs> it's there, huh? It's yeah. it's there. You just gotta find it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm getting a little apple on that one, as you say that, as I, I stick my nose in a little bit further. Just say pear, or like a white grape or a pear. White grape or pear, okay, yeah. Along the same lines, yeah, getting fruit fruit tones for sure. What else? I get almost a confectioner sugar spell. It's a little sweet, but it's kind of powdery. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's good. That's a little good. nutty too. I can't pick out what kind of nuts, but just a nutty. A little bit of nutty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Circus peanut. Circus yeah. the circus peanut. They, there you go. Very, yeah, very <laughs> rare circus peanut. All right, let's try it. Let's try it. Here we go. Last one. Cheers, gang. Mm. Delicious. It's delicious. <laughs> Got a uh, little bit of a delayed fuse on it. So kind of goes in sweet, smooth, yep. and then does heat up a little bit kind of late. So that comes from uh, typically a nice viscosity, a little peppery in there. What else? Heats up right away for me. Mm -hmm. Very similar to my first sip on A. On A. Okay. Hmm. All right, let's talk. Has anyone tried marzipan before? <laughs> you, you got the wrong event. That's uh, Fred no, Minnick no, is no. actually. No, he's on. absolutely <laughs> not. No, 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 no. I don't like. I don't like marzipan. Don't don't get me wrong. Don't she like pulled it. out the marzipan. Oh, no, I don't like it. I don't like it, but but nevertheless, uh -huh. I did get that note in in the, in the last one i i don't like mars pan and i i don't i don't buy it or enjoy it but the nevertheless the smell reminds me of that and also okay. kind of a green green fruit and green green butter. fruit okay yeah. all right mr prevalent on the nose for okay sure. mr paul Yeah, I pick up the same thing, like a grapiness on the nose. Um, okay. I was kind of hoping to find some kind of fruit on the palate, but I don't think it's there for me. Um, I like this one a lot, but the nose is a little misleading. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fred. Very similar to the other three as far as the taste. 
and a short finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mike? Uh, I agree with uh, a very short finish. I get almost a, a shortbread uh, flavor out of there. Um, yeah. Not, definitely not marzipan. It was shortbread. <laughs> shortbread. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, Mr. Bill. Well, since I've never had marzipan, I couldn't compare, but we'll I like some. it. Okay. All right. It's a little less conviction than the other ones, though, I noticed. There was a little. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I like. Uh, but don't, 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 don't prematurely uh, lock yourself into a vote because okay. you've changed before when we go through I the second time, I noticed. You've, you've, you have done that. That's After announcing choice. everyone to what to vote for, and then you were like, uh, everybody, please change your vote. So, okay. All right, Rob, He's we're going to jump down totally. to you next, man. What do you got? I had, I had toffee. toffee. A little bit of, little bit of uh, fruit notes, but mostly toffee for me. Okay. All right. All right. The Robinsons. Team Robinson. I got, I got the toffee, too, on the, on the taste. Uh, and a little bit herbal, almost medicinal quality to it. Okay. Herbal, yeah. I can get that, too. It did not seem quite as hot. Okay. But again, right. another good one. Yeah. Eric? Yeah, I mean, not having a ton of confidence in, in my palate, Earlier, Paul talked about that Jim Beam roasted peanut, okay. uh, which I've always felt like Jim Beam is unique. And I, I get a lot of that on this one. Okay. All right. Justine? Uh, on the taste, I would say kind of like a cinnamon walnut. Cinnamon walnut. Okay. Um, you get a little bit of the toffee. And this one... <laughs> Kind of like I think it was, was it the second one where the heat just kind of stays up front, like it doesn't. That's like a really short. Uh, you're, you're okay. Yeah. 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 Carrie. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to Justine and say the tribe has spoken. Okay. All right. Last one up <laughs> is Mr. Rick Brenner, aka the Legend. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say something like peanut brittle. Okay, that's in line with uh, what some others have said. So fair enough. fair enough. All right, let's put that one down. We're going to jump all the way back to A. Again, we're not going to go through and ask everyone like we did this time. We're just wanting to see, has there been any evolution to these? Whether it's, uh, whether it's been to the whiskey itself, perhaps us going through these four, mm -hmm. all high proofs. Uh, is there, is there been some, some sort of change that we want to recognize before we start ranking these things? So I nose it and give it a taste. It's still hot. It's, it's mellowed some though. What? A little of the, the sting is off, but it's still still up there, it feels. How about you guys? Any any mm -hmm. different thoughts as you taste this through for the second time? Mm -hmm. mm. A little bit of bitter dark chocolate. Okay. And the, and the nose became more vanilla-y. Vanilla? Vanilla? -y? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we will accept either one in this. I don't know that you could go out in the real world and say vanilla-y, but here, that's absolutely. That works. <laughs> Rob, now that you say that, though, see, that's one of the good things about doing the group work here. Now that you say that, and no one, I don't think, said vanilla the first time through. There's a lot of vanilla there. What else? Anybody else got anything to add on A? Okay. We're going to move on to B. Second time through. It, at least now we know where vanilla comes from. <laughs> the fungus, yeah. The fungus yeah. poop. I wish I didn't know. Yeah. Who told that story? Where'd that come from? Jeremy Shell. Okay. Jeremy, Jeremy. Shell. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Why did he tell to say that? But that was a good show, actually. Someone it was a very it was very educational. It was. It was. Yeah. I had someone reach out, a friend of mine that I used to work with at my old company. 
I didn't even know she listened to the shows. And she said, this was a really good show. I liked, I liked that. She's like, uh, tell Jeremy you did a good job, which I'm not going to do because Jeremy will just, <laughs> someone left a review there. one time, said he's got the best voice in bourbon or something like that. We we're still hearing about that. So, and it was Tim Swyatt. I think he was doing it just to stir things up. And he did a good job of stirring it up for sure. All right. Let's talk about B. Any changes? Anything else you want to denote on B? That one's a, that one's a uh, smooth. We know these are all high proof. They're all in the, the 120s. I'm not going to give the exact proofs because I don't want to skew anything. We know that they're all in the, the 120s, though. So it's going to be a high proof offering here, no matter which one it is. And uh, this one feels, though, like uh, drinks a little bit lower on the scale. It feels like you could uh, do that old thing where you just continue to sip and sip and sip until you fall, fall off the porch. Fall off the, chair. Fall yeah. off the porch. It happens. Yeah, the, the famously fall off the porch. And then, then you know you've had enough. All right. Anything else to add to this one? Good. Yeah, it's very good. Very good. All right. We're going to move on to C. What do we got with C? I mean, to me, I'm getting definitely the baked goods here. Oh, yeah. The spices, baker, baking spices. like the bazooka gum to me now bazooka I gum think, i think yeah. somebody said that on like one of the first two but i get it on this one now. you get it on this I, one i didn't get it on it before yeah that was fred who said the bazooka gum yeah, it, kept I, our, it kept our streak going of uh i don't know how many tastings in a row where we've someone's mentioned gum so recently somebody was talking about the bazooka gum and they said it only smells like the powder that's in the bazooka gum I don't remember who said that, but uh -huh. that was me. Okay, going on this one, but one that reason was on A. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I got that on A. A. All right, let's taste this one. I this can't one. remember if this is the one that somebody mentioned dark cocoa, but that's what I'm getting on this. Yeah, getting the dark cocoa. Okay, that was me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's good. That was very good. Anything else you want to add to this one? All right, let's move um, on to our last one, which is D. A little bit more on the nose there this time, I think. Open it up a little bit. This changed the most. Out of all three, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm getting different on the nose and the palate. And Fred's drank enough where uh, he just said it changed the most out of all three. And we've got four in front of folks. <laughs> that happens with high proof. That, that's just an offshoot of high proof. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, Fred. You're, you're at home. You're safe. You're in your chair. It's fine. So that's, yeah. that's okay. Half yeah. of us let that slide. So we <laughs> yeah. I had to call it out. I'm sorry, Fred. <laughs> yeah, but Steve, Steve's the only one that said he poured all of his samples. And he's the one who caught that. <laughs> I think Fred just finished his last sample. So yeah, he's he's ready to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Yeah, one time uh, the legend up there, his work forgot to tell him he's on call, and we were we did one of these tastings. Yeah, it was like when we had either six or eight samples. Well, I think maybe seven. Seven, and then they call him to go into work, and he's like, "I can't." <laughs> and the last hour, I just drank. I just drank seven samples that were all on the proof. I don't think I need to be getting in the company van. The company van, yeah, they agreed actually, so that was a good call. Yeah, and from that point forward, they remember to tell Rick he's working. Well, so, not yeah. a, you know, yeah, remind they me. should let you know. Yeah. Well, I've been out of rotation for a while. True, true. They never said I was back in. I was like, well, yeah. okay. We kept Rick going. He they moved him to Oklahoma for a while, and we had to. We, these events is what uh, oh, gave him Kansas a feeling of home. Yeah, he's in Kansas. Oh. Yeah. Which, by the way, I just saw in the news today they have an evil Knievel museum in Kansas. Yeah. Now I want to go to Kansas. I've never wanted to go to Kansas before, but 
I, evil can no, evil, please. I gotta go there. He was our least favorite. Can't just kind of suck. Well, it does, but evil can evil's awesome. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Dodge yeah. City's a pretty neat. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, uh, my, my dad would like that. Find stuff to do. Anything else on D we want to say before we go to? All right, all right. Here's where we're at, folks. We now turn it over to you. I'm going to give you a couple minutes. This is where I give you complete silence. And you guys get to right. rank rank your, your, your four here. Again, what you want to create is one being your favorite, four being your least favorite. You rank them in order, and, uh, and then we're going to put that into a spreadsheet, and that will tell us uh, at the end of that process which wins based on our scoring system that we utilize. It's a tried and true system, so <laughs> feel free to drink them all side by side. Whatever you got to do tasting-wise. Other than Fred, who drank his last sample uh, right before <laughs> his last talk, he's, he's out. But the rest of us still got samples. Taste them side by side, rank them, and enjoy this time where I'm not talking. I'm not saying anything. Just being, not perfectly, at all. being perfectly quiet, allowing you guys to work without interruption. Not judging. Perfectly quiet. on your list don't listen to me <laughs> don't you guys wish you could mute me wouldn't that be great i don't allow you to though zoom but will not allow steve, that. steve you should have some music for the some, for this part like i really could cool. sing maybe i could sing <laughs> Please do. He, he only knows one song though and it sucks <laughs> <laughs> Bill and I went on like a 14 hour car ride together. So yes, we, we know each other's singing abilities now. It seemed like it was a whole lot longer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it did seem a whole lot longer, right? I, uh, I thought we spent 14 hours in Kansas. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a... I was thinking that, that trip normally takes 20 hours and then Steve started singing. So yeah, he did 14. <laughs> it was fun though. I want to go back to Colorado. When do you want to leave? There are good distilleries in Colorado. I don't, you're going to take your wife and it's going to be a, you, me, and your wife. This is going to be a hell of a, I am going to bring a video camera for that one. The three of us out together. I'm just the third wheel the whole time. She, she kicked me in my ass <laughs> so fast. Get you liquored up, <laughs> belligerent. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Anything you say, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. One time I was at Neely and Bill came out there and we got him liquored up in the back of the, in Royce's <laughs> office. His wife stayed up front because she's not into drinking. So we gave Bill all kinds of stuff, just high proof. He shows back up like, I don't know, it was a long time, like an hour and a half. Oh, he shit face in about 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, honey, I'm it's ready like to go. 20 minutes. Yeah. He thought it was only 20 minutes, but it was like two hours. His wife is yelling at him as he left. And she was mad for a couple days, I understand. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Bill got in some big trouble. All right. How, Bill. how are those lists coming along? Good? And we need more time. I'm done. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull up the spreadsheet, which means I can hear you. I can't see you. I'm looking at a spreadsheet. So if you need to get my attention, just call out. Uh, you can't put something in chat, nor can you... Uh, uh, wave or anything like that i won't see it so what i'm going to do is uh, go through the list as they are on the spreadsheet not to any order that you guys are in or anything like that this is uh, on the spreadsheet and it's i think based on how you signed up for the class so paul russo you're first man what uh, what's your order uh, all right i gotta say this was a tough one because all four of these are awesome um, i think they're all pretty good too yeah i had i had i honestly had trouble ranking these because they're so good um if I have to pick, I'm going to go with B, C, A, D. Okay. That was very quick, but I got it. That's how good I am. All right. Melanie Robinson, you're next. All right. I have C, A, B, and D. And I have my guesses, too, on which is which. Okay. We'll, we'll hold off on that for a second. All right. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll put Melanie to the test and see how she did. Okay. <laughs> All right, Neil, you're next, man. All right, I had B, C, A, D. Okay. All right, Leah, I've got you next. I'm C, B, A, D. And I think we share some tasting notes with a former member there. C, B, A, D. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Next up is Bill Lewis. I am the same. <gasps> Leah. Wow. Same as Leah. Okay. Charlie <laughs> Baker Alpha Delta. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Mike. It's uh, B C A D. B C A D. Okay. Eric. I am C D A B. Okay. We don't have Jacob on, do we? I thought he was here earlier. He was. He was here when he left. Okay. All right, Rob, you're next. B C A D. A B. Okay. Carrie. Oh, C B. D A. C B D A. <laughs> All right, Justine. Um, B C A D. Okay. Oh, uh, the legend. C B A D. C D C B C B A D. Okay. Oh. Oh, he, he changed it. I think he changed it. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make a mistake, clearly. I, I, I think you yeah, right. You never do. Right. Yeah, I never do. I never do. All right, Fred, you're next. <laughs> B, D, B, and A. B, B. Okay. Let's see right here. Okay, good. Uh, did I miss anybody? Okay. You're going to put yours into the equation? No, I didn't put mine in because I know what it is. I'm looking at the list. I, I hate that because I, I don't want to add any bias in and I would be biased because I would okay. you know whether I, I would think I would do an honest job, but you know, once you're, you're kind of skewed. So I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want that to play into it at all. Um, I, I think we're going to let Melanie guess what's what, because she said she wanted to do that. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to confirm or deny anything. We'll go over what they are in just a second, but I wouldn't lock this in before I say Melanie, obviously once I say, uh, you know, if, if, you know, you could, you could change around the stuff. So let's, let's find out what you think is what, if you, if you think right. you got it. I think A was the Kentucky Chew. All right. I think B is Kathleen's Choice. Okay. Uh, C is the Kitchen Table. Okay. And D is the Barbecue. All right. D is the Barbecue. Okay. I, Mel Melanie, I was tracking too, and I exactly agree with you. All right. Okay. Yeah. I was kind of in the middle about B and C, but I remember liking Kentucky chew for a certain reason. I remember the barbecue being so off profile and I feel like I got mm -hmm. the same thing tonight. So I, I, I agree with you hundred percent. Cool. Okay. All right. Anyone else know those good enough that they want to take a guess? Oh yeah. Same, same. Same. Okay. We got a clue. Ain't got a okay. Clue. Yeah. It's been a while, right? I mean, yeah. Even to do the ones last year, and we did an event not that long ago. It's still, it'd be tough, but we'll share in just a second how they did, and, and you'll, you guys will get to see that. I I, I already know how they did. But we'll, we'll share here uh, the order of these. So uh, I don't think it's any surprise as you heard these getting voted on that in last place was D was D. Uh, and I'll go through and just share in just a second exactly what they are. But let's go through in the order first. So in last place was D. In third place was A with 23 points. In second place was B with 37 points. And finally, C with 43 points was our champion. So let's go back now and talk about what's what. All right. Um, everyone who guessed, I can tell you, you got one out of four correct. One out of four. D was Kentucky Chew. Coming in at 126.7, D was Kentucky Chew. Uh, that was guest backyard barbecue by our, our team there. Uh, in uh, third place with 23 points was A, that is kitchen table, kitchen table. So that was guest Kentucky Chew by our team. That came in at 128 proof was kitchen table. In second place with 37 points, I would have thought this one was the favorite going in, to be honest with you, based on my remembering of how these were, was Kathleen's Batch coming in at 127.4. And uh, you guys did get that one right. You guys got that one correct. 
that's what one of you guys said it was. And then finally, uh, you guys guessed kitchen table, but of course it is backyard barbecue coming in at 128.8 proof. That was the favorite of the night, backyard barbecue. C, what do you think, gang? Oh, I think we were right. <laughs> of course. I think you got it messed up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I got it messed up. Yeah, you guys got it right, I'm sure. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's always interesting to do these blind. Like I said, I, what did you guys, so did you, was your favorite coming in? What did you think was your favorite? Because I, I, like I said, I thought Kathleen's batch was going to win it as I reflected back on these. I, I remember doing tastings of these. I, I mean, I love Jim Beam. I love Booker's. And I remember thinking Kentucky Chew was my favorite. I ranked that fourth tonight. So uh -huh. who knows? Yeah. 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 That is the, uh, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, your, your taste and, and palate changes a little bit. Yeah, but they're they're all good. They're all good. You know, there's a loser in this batch. No. Yeah. Yeah. There's not none of them that, that I would throw out. Mm -hmm. What was the proof on these? So uh, starting with A, which was kitchen table, that was 128 proof. B is Kathleen's batch, that was 127.4 proof. C is the backyard barbecue, that's 128.8. That's the high one of the evening. And then D which is the low point of the evening, 126.7. That's Kentucky Chew. Kentucky Thank Chew you. is the lowest one, yeah. Huh. What do you guys think? Pretty good, good huh? Good stuff. Yeah. Who else is going to drink them all besides me? Anybody? Okay, Mr. Bell, Mike. Ryan. Yeah, I'm done with mine. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <That's tense. laughs> That's awesome. That was great. I didn't want. I didn't want to leave any little drops behind. They right. Yeah. yeah, that's what happens for me with samples. I'll leave like a half one. I never go back to it. So I'm like, I just got to drink it all when, I, when I'm there. So, oh, absolutely. All right. Well, that'll uh, officially wrap up the tasting part of this. And of course, as always, I'll stick around, answer any questions you've got, hang out a little bit, but I will say goodbye to our folks that are going to be watching this on the recording. So take care, everybody. All right.